Okay. Let's get the scriptures on this on this on the uh, ship of Tarshish real quick, so I can get that. Then we'll open this up for questions here. Uh, Genesis. Uh, chapter 10. Okay, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Genesis chapter 10. Verse 4. Go ahead. We're going into the ships of Tarshish. Why? We have some we have some people teaching out there. And I'm going to make this clear. All right. And I'm going to make this clear for all the brothers and sisters out there who might be listening to this. When we talk about, when we uh, go into the scriptures and it says, come out of her, my people. That's not the gathering of Christ church saying, come out of her, my people. That's not my, myself or another person saying, well, this is what our opinion is. Or this is what our philosophy is concerning. Come out of her when the Bible says, come out of Babylon. That's what the Most High said. Now, each person as an individual outside of others have to decide what that scripture means. We're not going to force what we're saying on anyone. But what we believe is to come out of her. Not just spiritually, but physically also. Because the plagues that are coming to Babylon are physical plagues. The plagues that came to Egypt were physical plagues. So we believe that the Most High is saying come out of her, forewarning his people and, and believers of truth before he bring the damnation as he did Egypt. That's what we believe. Now, if others believe something different, then we'll, we'll have to see. All right. And we also believe coming out of her that just because you come out of her, it's not over. You still must proclaim the truth and bring the truth throughout the four corners of the earth. All right. Now I'm saying that because some people are saying, well, listen to what's going on here. You don't really have to leave Babylon because after everything is done. The Most High is going to send the ships of Tarshish over to pick us up. All right. Now, I don't mean to alarm anyone. But I feel that on these Sabbaths, after we go into the law, we should bring out certain understandings so that you can know what time it is. All right. There will not be ships of Tarshish coming to North America. And that's biblical, and we're going to prove that. There will be, um, we're going to repeat it, you can hold it, you can listen to this clearly. There will be no ships of Tarshish coming to North America. And I'm going to show you out of the scriptures. That's number one. All right. The news, some of the news that we have, and it's definitely Bible prophecy. They didn't tell you all. Everyone is is caught up in the Tremaine. What's his name? Trayvon Martin. Trayvon Martin thing. Barack Obama. Like I say, almost every week he comes with something else. And Congress have okayed a bill now that will have Russia, Russian troops. We told y'all two years ago that there's Russian troops within the United States training, but they're not telling you. A law was just passed where the Russian troops will now work with Homeland Security and certain forces to combat homegrown homegrown terrorism within the United States. Now this is the bill that was just passed last week. 
while people are caught up into whatever they caught up into why listen Russia and China and other countries were part of the bailout who do you think bailed America out so what do you think they get in return for bailing America out they get pieces of the country America have been broken up it's a corporation it has been liquidated and it belongs to these other countries so now this is a way that, that they can actually roll out their troops and claim their territory so that's what's about to happen here all right and when this all go down listen to me clearly they're gonna get people up in these cities there's too many people for them to deal with so the first thing they're going to do is they're going to cut all utilities cut your water no living water no nothing so it can be diseased up and destroyed all up in the cities after they do their false flag right after that people automatically begin to turn on each other so they're going to sit back and let that happen first as a pretext to come in and bring order and that's when they will bring in your NATO and your foreign troops who have been there for years. There's a whole Chinese fleet in Florida right now. It's been there for over two years. You had the Russian troops in the Bay Area for over three years. So now Barack Obama, he didn't sign the NDAA. He did also sign the bill that give Homeland Security hollow tip bullets. He have also signed the bills that now that America work in conjunction with foreign troops for homegrown terrorism. That means foreign troops on the books now have the right to kill American citizens. Okay? But that's not the biggest issue here. The biggest issue here is what they're going to do with these nuclear plants and what they're planning to do all under the country to break it up itself, knowing there's too many people to fight against. Free thinking people are a threat to the powers and everyone is waking up, especially those in the United States. So that's a threat to this order they have. So some people out there teaching, and that's great that they're out there teaching about the Most High and the commandments and all that, but they're also teaching things, claiming that either UFO is going to pick them up, or either the ships of Tarshish is going to come get them and save them from the UN troops. And, 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 from, the, and from the nuclear plants, they're going to let loose like Fukushima. The earthquakes that's going to come, the plagues that's going to come, the war that's going to come. When, when, when Iran is cut loose, they have taught that through all this, that, that, that some ships going to be waiting for you to bring you back to Jerusalem. Is that so? Let's go into the ship of Tarshish. First of all, let's start with what is Tarshish for those who don't know. Let's start at Genesis 10 and 4. Verses, Go ahead. Uh, Genesis chapter 10, verse 1. Go ahead. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah. These are the generations of the sons of Noah. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Who? And Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Okay. Ham is the father of the northern Africans, which is... Ethiopians, the original Ethiopians before the Israelites scattered in certain areas of, of Cush. Then you got the Libyans, Egyptians, and the Canaanites. Those were the four families of northern Africa. All of Africa was not Ham. Just northern Africa was Ham. Okay? Then you have Japheth, which is the Asian people. Alright? You got those like uh, uh, the people originally fr from China and different parts of Japan and, and uh, the Iranians, different parts of Iran and those areas. 
those areas are Asians. Pakistan's those are those are Asian countries. So that's Japheth. All right, and then you have Shem, which is predominantly those of near Saudi Arabia, the Middle East. Go ahead. And unto them were sons born after the flood. Verse two: the sons of Japheth, Gomer and Magog, and Madai and Jabin. And to Baal and Meshach. And so, what, so what is this showing you? This is showing you that Magog and Madai are Asian countries. These are Asian people, Japhetic people. So when those who see Russia in prophecy with his Gog and Magog and want to relate it to the people who stole Russia, scriptures are not talking about the the the, uh, the people who took the land. So the Idumian, the Idumian, Greek and Asian wars. Okay, Russia was taken by the Romans, so it's not talking about the people who are in Russia now. But when you look at Magog, I'm going to examine Magog for a second. Magog, it says, a son of Japheth, also a barbarous northern region. These are the original sons of Japheth. Then you have Madai. Madai is Central Asia, Madai or Medes. Who are the Medes today? Iranians. Now I know some of our people in America don't know the difference because they all are following Islam. You think they all are Arabs? No. Saudi Arabian, those are the, Arab, the Arabic Ishmaeli people, a lot of them. Okay, but the people in Iran are Japheth, an entirely different family. Okay? Read on. Verse 3. And the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, and Rapath, and Togamah, and the sons of Javan, Elisha, and Tarshish, Kittim, and Dabinim. So the sons of who? And the sons of Javan, Elisha, and Tarshish. And Tarshish. Show you that these lands of Tarshish would be sons of Japheth. Now, I have a map here, a small map. Okay. Here, for those who, who, who want to look at this, it's crystal clear. Alright. See Tarshish? Tarshish is right here, right off the Mediterranean. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Which is southern Turkey. These were the original Japhetic people. All right. When you look down here near Egypt, and you look over here, you see some of the sons of Ham who lived there. So Egypt is going down this area. You got Egypt here, then you got the tongues of the Red Sea down there. Egypt all along here, around, along the Mediterranean. All right. So you got Ham, Shem, and Japheth, which <coughs> surrounded the Gentiles. Surrounded what? The Great Sea or the Mediterranean. And there's many isles on this side that you can't even see because it's a two-part map. But there's a lot of islands on this side so-called Greek islands which are also part of this map <clears throat> right so when it talks about the ships of Tarshish it's talking about ships that will be coming from around the Great Sea they will be ordered from the Great Sea the ships of Tarshish from the Mediterranean area okay so let's go into it here Let's go to Zechariah 13. So when it talks about the Isles of the Sea, some people say, well, that's talking about Japhetic people. When it talks about the Isles of the Gentiles, which is Japheth. No, that's wrong. Because it starts off with Ham, Shem, and Japheth.